Get your dirty mitts off my instrument. Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to, welcome to the hand tool only build. I have relocated this instrument from my home workshop to Crimson Headquarters because I'm here more often and I really want to finish this. I've been back for over two weeks and I've spent a grand total of three or four hours behind a workbench, workbench so far this year. It is mind-blowingly frustrating. Uh, I need to get some work done, I need to build some guitars, I need to use some tools and uh, this is going to be easing me back into uh, life as we know it. I've got a little bit more finishing uh, of uh, carving and cuts to do. I have gone through the whole guitar, the back, the sides, the front. I've done all of these beautiful uh, designs. Uh, I've still got to cut the headstock and think about doing a little bit over here and then I'm going to be, well, actually applying finish. So, on we go. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> I made some changes to the designs, to the patterns, tidied things up, straightened them out. But it's all good. I'm really, really happy. Gone through multiple little designs, and uh, I like, yeah, I like this, it, it works. I'm undecided on my sigil going in the center there, but uh, it does need to be somewhere. Gently does it. So the initial cut is done gently and you just pass through it a few times to open things up and then I'm going for a wider blade. The plan is to fill each of these cuts with uh, a mixture of dust and uh, guitar finishing oil, essentially. In the past, people, craftspeople, over the centuries have used uh, various mixtures to do this. Uh, including charcoal, but uh, I want a relatively subtle effect. That's too close to the uh, too close to the edge there. Just move it this way. That's better. Yeah, I've shrunk that down a little bit and that actually works better for me. Uh, I like the look of that. And it's also more freehand because this is a signature. So I'm not gonna use the ruler. So I'm going in with my thumb and stabilizing things. There we go. Open the, uh, open the cuts up and then it's on to just a little bit of sandpaper. And we're gonna have to do this process a couple of times, I think, or at least the, uh, the opening up. Get rid of all the sand, the, the drawing marks, etc., etc.
There's a little bit of filler here, if you recall. Okay, it's official. I have no self-control whatsoever. Uh, I've drawn those on, that's cool, and I've also done a little bit on the side. It felt a little bit weird that uh, there wasn't anything on that area where it goes around the entire rest of the guitar, uh, apart from the headstock. I'm not doing engravings on the side of the headstock or the back, but uh, yeah, everywhere else. And another day has dawned. I have, uh, since sanding this down, gone through and spent a day sorting out the uh, vintage tool auction house that we we're uh, in the process of sorting, uh, of creating. So uh, that was uh, that was fun. We're, uh, the first auction is gonna be in two or three weeks. And uh, yeah, we have so many tools come through that we can't justify putting on the vintage tool shop.com website, but we also hate I also hate uh, throwing away or recycling uh, stuff that could still be used as a tool. So uh, you're not here to talk about that, are you? You're here to look at me applying the finish on this instrument. I need a little bit more work on this neck. There's just a little bit of carving to do there. Get it right before the finish goes on. There is one problem though, and that is the fact that this is an acoustic guitar and it is an acoustic guitar without a tailpiece and a movable bridge. We're not talking jazz here, we're talking not jazz. I shouldn't apply oil where the bridge is gonna go, but I haven't built the bridge yet. Planning, thinking, all of that, I, I don't really do that until the, the cameras start going. I need to sort this bridge out. The problem is I can't actually make it here because I don't have offcuts of this uh, mahogany. The whole guitar is being made out of this uh, fence post. And uh, I also don't actually have the plans for this guitar here because I am a numpty. It's another day and uh, I have coffee. I have the plans, I have some wood. Let's, uh, let's crack on, shall we? Okay, so what I need is both the exact shape of the bridge and the exact positioning on the, uh, on the instrument. So, that will give me, yeah, let's just trace that. Give me the corner, give me the center line, give me my sound hole and the two edges, I suppose. Actually, just the two edges of the corner sound, but reference points. It would be better if I had some nice flat paper, wouldn't it? Actually, I want to draw this slightly smaller. This is a little bit of finish underneath the bridge. Now, also remember, I haven't yet made this bridge, therefore I can uh, always custom fit the bridge if I need to. Thank you. 
burnish the edges down with the back of my fingernail. I do not want any thin guitar finishing oil to get through here. Perfect. Always double check, treble check, everything. On the plans, on the plans, the front edge is there. I've pulled it back, so actually it's too close, and then I've compensated for it there. But, uh, yeah. Let's just pull the whole thing forward. We'll just make it a little bit chunkier. Never assume that your plans are right. Especially if you're, you know, me. So that there is where we're at. Gives me enough room. Okay, I've double checked all of the sanding, etc., and I'm starting out with some penetrating guitar finishing oil. The plan is that I'm gonna use 1200 grit or maybe even 1500 grit wet and dry sandpaper to actually uh, push the oil into the wood. Now, this is penetrating, that's what it does in any case, but what I'm gonna do in that process is create a slurry out of the dust itself, mixing with the finish and thus filling the, uh, the gaps left by my, my knives. It's gonna be relatively subtle. One last thing though. Don't, if you can help it, apply oil without gloves on. Uh, frankly, I think that there should be a class action lawsuit against true oil. Uh, the stuff that is in that uh, oil, uh, I know because I reverse engineered it, is not good for the health and you don't want to be absorbing that. Genuinely, seriously, PSA, all that jazz. There's no way I can avoid this at this point. Um, we're going to have to actually just deliver on the promises and see what this guitar looks like under finish. Exciting times. First of all, I'm going to apply oil across the entire instrument, rub it in, and that is to stop, for example, if I drip over the edge and then leave that to semi-dry, you might end up with a drip mark that you don't want to see long term. That's a little bit more efficient. Thank you. 
everything gets so slippy when you're covered in, covered in oil. Uh, don't quote that out of context, please. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this is the initial coat, and to be honest, I can already see, I can see the edges, I can see the cuts, etc. as I wanted to. It doesn't even need the grain filling and the slurry creation and all of that, but uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to do it. Oh no, sorry, Bob. Ah. Yeah. Dispose of these uh, in a uh, bucket of water or something like that. You do not want to uh, set your workshop on fire by mistake as they dry. Okay, a fresh glove. And this is 1200 grit. Bring my light in closer. And very gently, putting almost no pressure on at all, you just rub the finish in. And this is a really good way to, to grain fill gently. And also build up a somewhat of a gloss oil finish. Let's not drop oil in it. Okay, and once you've done that, use a relatively fresh rag to clear the excess off and move on to the next stage. You don't want this to dry with a thick coating. Uh, this sort of a finish penetrates, rub the excess off till it's basically touch dry, hence no glove on this hand, and uh, then build it up that way. Okay, I found a few sort of minor scratches and uh, that's what happens when you put the initial coats of finish on something. If you haven't been uh, absolutely perfect with your sanding or, uh, or care and attention to detail of storage, but the whole guitar is, I'm so excited. I am so, so, so excited. We are going to let this sit and cure uh, for, for the afternoon, because I have uh, something else to be getting on with. I am incredibly happy with this look. Now, oil, you have to rub the excess off. You don't want to leave any buildup anywhere. Uh, 
In this case, it wouldn't be particularly bad because we are going through with the wet and dry and rubbing excess off uh, for a few more goes at least. And I've started at 1200, I'll go to 1500, then 2000, see what sort of a, a finish we can get. But um, yeah, if you're not doing that, for example, if you are applying oil over a stain where you can't use this paper because you will go straight through that stain, uh, yeah, rub it all off. And this is after only one coat of, of finish. This is gonna be a pretty awesome guitar in the end. I hope. I'm really happy. It's gonna take probably half a dozen, eight coats to get to the sort of finish that I'm hoping for. We have to make a bridge in the next episode. We have to string her up and play her and find another one day project to take over a year to build. That can be done. Click like, subscribe, and uh, most importantly, go make some sawdust. I'll catch you on the flip side. I need to stop saying that. Ah, so cheesy. See you soon. Goodbye.